admittedly much in the first decades of the course, it, it, much of it's been intellectual, but, and yet you could feel it in our dance party last night. That was no intellectual experience. That was spontaneous joy. That was erupting joy. And you know that feeling. And you probably have felt that feeling when you've watched certain movies or you've lis listened to certain songs and you feel transported. That's why I was emotional this morning listening to Instant Karma. Instant Karma is going to get you, it's going to knock you off your feet. You know, G John Lennon was talking about the holy instant in his beautiful way and watching the wheels. Oh, I don't know if I'd have got through some of the darkest hours if I hadn't listened to watching the wheels. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I really love to watch them roll. No longer riding on the merry-go-round. I just had to let it go. Do you know how important that song was in, in my experience? And to be able to play that song anytime I wanted to, when the ego chatter got loud, trying to tell me I was guilty and crazy. That's actually in the song. People think I'm crazy doing what I'm doing. Even that's in the song. Well, I tell them there's no problem, only solutions. That's a course in miracles. John is channeling, it's on his birthday, and I'm talking about him, but he's, he's channeling the ideas from the Course. That's why I was so touched. That's why this morning I was moved to tears in my meditation of the gratitude of how Jesus is using the Beatles and John and George and, and all these great gurus and saints and prophets and mystics and there is just, it's like a giant song of awakening and and we can be appreciative of that and also we can start to bring that in to our experiences with the Course in Miracles. Like I said, a Course in Miracles is like razor, razor sharp uh, metaphysics. There's your diamond cutter. More than razor sharp, it's, it's, it can cut a diamond. And that's a really compressed piece of coal. <laughs> that, that diamond is shiny and sparkly, but we don't want to follow the diamond. We want to follow that sm small, still voice within. Another thing I was reminded of today was I've got this thing called Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment and it's an amazing tool and it's online now, but there's one of the movies that came out some years ago, it was made in Australia, but you know how the, the Matrix kind of got hold and caught hold and became like a, a sensation all over the world. Th there was a movie that was kind of like The Matrix, except it was even more Course in Miracles than The Matrix, and it was so direct and to the point that people were telling me when it first was coming out, they said, David, you've got to see this movie. It's a, it's a major motion picture that's, that's a Course in Miracles acted out. And I was like, what, what, where, where? Let me go. And I remember going to the theater, like, the second day after it had opened in the town where I was, and I sat there, and there was only like five people in the theater, and my housemate, who's also into the course, went with me, and we were watching this movie with our eyes wide open and our mouths wide open, and we were doing high fives throughout the movie, and the movie was so dark, uh, it had huge metaphysics, but it was so dark, which if you stripped away all the pleasure and all the distractions of the world, this would be a pretty dark world <laughs> if you took away all the egos, ooh la la. Anyway, the movie was so dark that we were doing high fives because of the Course Principles, and the rest of the people in the movie were looking at us like, <laughs> like they were watching some kind of an Alfred Hitchcock thing, and we, what are they doing back there? They're, we're going, whoa, man, high five, <laughs> all the way through the movie for two hours, you know, and the people were kind of huddled, trying to make it through the movie, and we're in the back, you know, doing this, because it just shows you it's all, it's all your perception. We were just so ready for that movie. It was called Dark, Dark City. But anyway, in this movie, Dark City, there's, an, there's a character, an, an inspector, 
Inspector Walensky, and Walensky is like a detective, so he's been pondering this murder cases and pondering everything that's going on in the movie, and he's studied it so well that basically he's come to the awareness that, that there's no way out, that the whole world was designed that you would not escape. The world was made that you would never know who you are. So it's a closed system. So the body was invented, and time and space were invented, and everything about time and space was made by the ego that you would never remember who you are. Sometimes I call this world Distractionville. <laughs> oh, is it Distractionville? You know, you want options, not real options, but you want pseudo options, you want pseudo pursuits, you want to hide in the darkness so deep and wind yourself so deep that you'll forget the light. Well, that's what this world is. It's a, it's a major distraction. And I have to say, the five senses are all part of that. So in the movie Dark City, at some point, the main character, he keeps seeing these signs called Shell Beach, which is a brighter times. It's like a beach, it's light. In a very dark world, it's like symbols of light. It's kind of like in this world, when people talk about heaven and nirvana, they're talking about something they hope is there, <laughs> right? I mean, if they had a direct experience of heaven or nirvana, they wouldn't be talking about it in a body. <laughs> they would be in the, in the bliss of eternal love and light. But everybody talks about heaven and talks about nirvana and, and samadhi and all these things, but, but they're just hoping that these mystics and saints are right <laughs> about what they're talking about. This gives them hope for something brighter. Well, in the movie, Shell Beach is like this this, um, this poster, this snapshot, this thing of, of brighter days on a beach. But the thing is, everybody talks about Shell Beach, and they know, they all talk about Shell Beach, but no one can remember how to get there. It's just this thing that's talked about, but nobody remembers the way. Well, the reason nobody remembers this way, the way is because time and space was made to keep you into amnesia so that you would never remember your true identity as spirit. So the world is a giant, you might say, cosmic amnesia case, but it's not just partial amnesia. It's complete amnesia. So everybody who talks about heaven, even everybody who moves their little eyeballs on A Course in Miracles and reads the passages and goes, ooh, ooh, they, they're, <laughs> ooh, there's something powerful here, but, oh, there's still the world, you know, I still am interacting with the world. It's heavy, it's dark. That's why I needed a lot of heavy doses of John Lennon, <laughs> heavy doses of the Beatles, heavy doses of George Harrison. I even like the story of the Beatles because, you know, a lot of times we get into groups and we think, oh, groups are so wonderful and we've got our little Liv Living Miracles group and MIC, Mick, Miracles in Contact group and da 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 You know, John left the Beatles. He, he formed another little group, smaller than the Beatles. Instead of the Fab Four, it was called John and Yoko. <laughs> he went for a couple, couple size group. <laughs> and they worked out a lot of stuff too, you know, bed-ins, they did press conferences for peace for world peace to draw attention to it. They did a lot of work, so did the Beatles. But what I'm saying is, it's not so much the form in which your earth life takes, it's actually being led by the purpose to be guided into an experience that will release the world from the chains of the ego mind. As you release the ego, you set all the captives free because this is a holographic universe and all those seven billion people are projections of the ego as well. You know, we think there's seven billion peoples out there and they all have private minds and private thoughts, which goes against the total teachings of the Course, that all minds are joined. There's really only one of us. The name of us is Christ. <laughs> and that's a God-given name, that's not an earthly name at all. You know, even the realms of the angels, those are symbols too, but, but they're symbols of comfort, of blessing, of 
Come home to the light, of welcome home to the light, remember who you are. So it takes a lot of mind training to go into the next phase of the course, but we're moving into it now. It's wonderful. That dance, we were all feeling it, like, whoo, everybody's dancing around, it's very spontaneous, very involuntary. That was not choreographed. <laughs> that was not even planned. It just happened the night before John Lennon's birthday. <laughs> and we burst into the joy. So this next phase we're going into is a phase of surrender. I, I heard that today in, in the song Mind Games, you know, playing those mind games forever. It's, it's in the end, love is the answer, and you know that for sure. Yes is the answer. You gotta let it, you gotta let it go. He's telling us to let the world go and let the mind games the ego mind games, the attack and defense, He's, you got to let it go. And then he says, yes is surrender. Now he's even defining yes for us as surrender. Wow, John, <laughs> on your birthday, you, we're starting to really appreciate you a little more than we ever did. You were really giving it to us. We needed to hear that. That was Jesus singing through John Lennon and those beautiful lyrics to help us wake up. And we're moving into a phase where, where the study and the practice of the Course now, if you really are devoted with it, has to yield into an involuntary experience. Miracles are involuntary. Miracles should not be under conscious control. So we can't like intellectually kind of try to keep the lid on the miracles because the intellect is, is just an aspect of consciousness and that's going to, the lid of the intellect will get blown off uh, into an experience. There is an experience that will come to end your doubting. There is an experience of joy, of supreme happiness that transcends death, that transcends sickness, that transcends separation. And we're getting ready to move into another phase of our work with A Course in Miracles.